So this is a little bit different. Normally, of course, we meet in the shop, which is literally right next door on the other side of this wall. But today, you're gonna get to see a little bit of the office instead. And I can already hear you asking, why are we in the office? This is a machining channel after all. We should be in the shop. And while I concede that this is indeed a very good point, and I agree with you, for reasons that I will make clear in just a couple of minutes, we have to do it here in the office instead. So you're just gonna have to bear with me. I promise when you see what we're gonna be doing, at least for some of you, this is gonna be super interesting and you'll agree with me when I say that it's absolutely worth it. The rest of you have honestly probably clicked off already anyway. So if you're still here, let me show you what we're gonna be getting into today. Okay. So brace yourselves because this is literally gonna blow your freaking mind. At least it blew my mind when they emailed me about it and I was like, yeah, I absolutely have to check that out. So I hope that you agree with me because what we have here is the Creality Sir Moon S1 3D Scanner. This thing is absolute technological magic. So what exactly is this thing? Well, like I said, it's a 3D scanner. So from what I understand, at least, you can kind of think of it like a handheld LiDAR scanner. Essentially, what that means is this thing right here in my hand shoots a combination of lasers and or near infrared to scan three dimensional objects in the real world and basically turn them into 3D CAD files. And the technology in this thing is just absolutely space age, far beyond my comprehension anyway. So it has an entire array of blue lasers and it can also use near infrared. So that combination allows this thing to scan all types of different objects from the size of like a pen or pencil all the way up to the size of an entire vehicle. And you can scan objects in a wide range of lighting conditions thanks to the combination of those blue lasers and near infrared sensors. So hopefully Hopefully now you can understand a little bit more about why I was so excited to get my hands on this thing. And the only caveat with getting my hands on this as early as I did, it hasn't yet released to the public as of the filming of this video, is that the software that's gonna be used to control these isn't quite finished yet. So the only software that I have available to me right now to test this is very early beta software. That software only runs on Windows. My only Windows computer is a desktop and it's sitting right behind me here in the office. However, when this thing releases to the public, there will be software available for both Windows and Mac. You'll be able to install it on your laptop or basically wherever you want. So we will be able to use this in the shop very, very soon. However, for now, we're stuck here in the office. Anyway, I am legitimately excited to see what this thing can do. However, before we can do anything with it, we gotta learn how to use it. So that's what this video is really gonna be about, is figuring out how to get this thing all set up and use it to scan something in and see what kind of results we get. All right, so the very first thing that we're gonna have to do before we can do anything else is to get the scanner calibrated. And in order to calibrate it, we're gonna have to connect it to the computer. So for the initial connection setup and calibration, we're gonna have to use the included device cable. As you can see, it's plenty long on one end. It has the USB 3 connection and DC power connection. The USB 3, of course, connects to your computer and the DC power connection connects to the included power brick. The other end of the cable, of course, connects to the device itself. As you can see, it's basically just a USB-C connection with this included strain relief. It just plugs right into the bottom of the handheld here, and it's got these little screws that you can tighten up so it doesn't disconnect on you while you're scanning. Once you've got the device connected and open up this Creality Scan software, after a minute or two, the software is automatically going to detect your scanner and connect to it. Now, the scanners are calibrated at the factory, but you do want to calibrate your scanner as soon as you get it, you know, before you start scanning everything. Don't trust that factory calibration. So the first thing we're going to do is calibrate the scanner. I have never done this before, so we're just going to clean Click the calibrate button and I guess follow the instructions. 
Something that's important to mention when it comes to calibrating one of these scanners and using the calibration plate is that these scanners are just incredibly accurate. This particular scanner, the Sermoon X1, has a volumetric accuracy of 0.02 to millimeters plus 0.04 millimeters per meter. Just for reference, for those in the US like myself, that is like a couple ten thousandths of an inch. Just wildly accurate. Anyway, when we flip the calibration board over, we will find that QR code that the software is asking for. When scanning the barcode, the software will automatically detect it and show you a picture of your calibration plate on success. And at this point, I'm just gonna follow the directions that the software gives me because like I said, I've never actually done this before. So when it comes to the actual calibration process, there really isn't a whole lot to say here because it really couldn't be any simpler. You just follow the on-screen instructions or prompts, and that really just entails moving the device around into different positions above the calibration plate, and each time that you move the device into one of those positions, the software will automatically detect that you've hit that position. It will, I guess, scan the calibration plate and then it will show you the next position. I guess the only thing that I would like to add here is that going through this process really made me realize just how much data this device is taking in at all times. I guess I just hadn't really considered the idea that this scanner is constantly keeping track of its own position and rotational data in 3D space at all times. And seeing that instant feedback on the screen as I moved the device around or tilted it in one direction or another, it was just really impressive to see. And quite honestly, when I first realized what was going on, it kind of surprised me. And now that our scanner is connected to the computer, it's been calibrated. At this point, we're basically all set up and ready to start scanning. And the object that I wanna use for this initial scan is this old antique bench grinder. This is actually a project that I picked up for the shop quite a while ago. I just haven't yet gotten around to it. But I think it's gonna make a good subject for our first scan because one, it's small enough to be easy to deal with, but at the same time, it has a lot of different types of interesting shapes. It has some rounded organic shapes. It has some flat surfaces, some nice sweeping curves, and we even have some screw threads on the end of the shaft here. I'm not quite sure how to deal with something as detailed as a screw thread yet, so we're just going to kind of wing it, see what type of results we get, and then I guess go from there. Before we can start scanning though, we need to get the object sort of prepped for scanning, and to do that we need to add some of these reflective markers. So, side note, when it comes to these reflective markers, I honestly have no idea if there's any kind of strategy or methodology when it comes to how or where you're supposed to place these things. So I'm just going to kind of put them wherever makes sense to me and we'll see what kind of results we get. Anyway, here's what it looks like after I have plastered the entire object with reflective markers. So we're ready to start scanning now, and as for all of these different scan settings, I'm really just using the tool tips to guide me here. So we're gonna use the blue laser mode. It says that the blue laser is more suitable for higher accuracy scans, and it says the infrared mode is best used for more organic shapes like human bodies, faces, and things of that nature. So we're just gonna use the blue laser mode, and as for the rest of these, again, I'm just using these tool tips to guide me. Uh, point class seems to be like sort of the general scanning mode as far as I can tell. It says that the global marker, this is best for larger objects. Our object is not that large. I am going to change the scan resolution down to 0.25 millimeters. This is right around 10 thousandths of an inch accuracy, which I think is plenty accurate for what we're going to be doing here. And then cross lines again here in the tooltips, it says it's suitable for quick scanning. And that's what we're trying to do. Just create a quick scan and see what kind of results we get. And then finally, as usual, I'm literally just following the instructions that the software has given me. So it says, please set the scanning parameters, which we've done, and then click preview to scan. So let's click preview and see what happens. 
So as with pretty much everything else about this device so far, the scanning process is pretty intuitive and straightforward. As soon as you click that preview button, the software is going to kick over into an appropriately named live preview mode. Here, the software is basically going to show you a real-time representation of everything that your scanner is seeing. Here, you can see the object, and you can see what appear to be different colored lights all over the object that we're scanning. Those are actually the locating dots that we placed all over the object. And you'll see that the color of these dots will change, and they will actually change from white to yellow, blue, green, red, depending on the quality of the scan that you're getting for whatever surface that particular dot is attached to. You'll also notice that there is a bar along the left-hand side of the screen, and the colors on that bar correspond to the colors on the dots. And it's basically just telling you to either move the scanner closer or further away from whatever surface you're scanning in order to get the dots to turn green and to get a good scan of that surface. And from here, you basically just repeat this process until you get all of the little dots to turn green and you get the entire object scanned. Once the object is all scanned in, it looks good and is an accurate representation of whatever it is that you're trying to scan. You're good to go, and you can end the scan. And there we have it, our very first 3D scan. And, you know, I gotta say, I am legitimately impressed with this. And let's keep in mind, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I have never even seen a tool like this before in my life, let alone used one. And these are the results that I was able to get just by following the prompts that were given to me by the software. I mean, if we zoom in here, we can see that it was, of course, able to pick up all of the text on the casting. But if we look closer, we can see that it was actually able to pick up the surface textures in the casting. The level of detail is just incredible. And for perspective, you know, let's just <laughs> let's just think about what we were just able to do here. I, a person with zero knowledge or experience, was essentially just able to create a dimensionally accurate 3D model of my antique bench grinder in about five minutes time. And I mean, I don't know, to me, that is just mind boggling. Imagine the potential of a tool like this in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing. And, you know, right now we're just, we're looking at the raw scan. From here, we could go to mesh processing. I am honestly not sure how all of this stuff works. Uh, let's just click one click process and see what happens. All right, let's click OK and just see what this does. And there we have it. So basically what that did was it processed our 3D scan mesh and has turned it into an actual 3D object. That entire process, I think, took about two minutes. However, you know, obviously, depending on the complexity of your model and the performance of your computer, the time that it takes to do that is going to vary. But now that we have this 3D object, we could edit it here if we wanted to. We could export this to our favorite CAD software. We could even send this thing to the 3D printer and have a 3D printed copy of the antique bench grinder if we wanted to. And we were able to accomplish all of this in the span of just a few minutes, having absolutely no prior experience or knowledge about this process. And to me, that is just truly, truly mind boggling. And the potential of a tool like this in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing is legitimately exciting. All right, so before I wrap this up, I do just want to mention that, you know, I think probably pretty obviously, there is a lot more that this device can do. However, you know, we're just unfortunately not going to have nearly enough time to demonstrate all of it in this video. And honestly, there's still a lot that I need to learn about even using the device. But in addition to the very, very simple scan that you saw in this video, this device can also do full color scanning. Like I mentioned earlier, it can do IR scanning. 
It can do single line deep hole scanning. I mean, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of what this device is capable of. I mean, not only can it do all of those different types of 3D scans, it can not only do all of that stuff while connected to a computer, which is what you saw in this video, it can also do all of that different type of scanning wirelessly using this wireless handle here. So like I said, we haven't even started to scratch the surface of what this device is capable of. This is a serious pro level 3D scanner. I mean, when it comes to 3D scanning, I, I don't think that you're gonna find a device that is more capable than this one that I have in my hand right here. So hopefully we're gonna be able to explore a lot more of what this device can do in the future, in future videos, and hopefully do some really cool stuff around the shop with it. So if that's the sort of thing that interests you, if you think this is cool in any way, definitely keep an eye out because there will be more videos featuring this device in the future. There's a lot of stuff that I want to do with it. For example, you know, I have recently been doing a series of videos about that mini lathe that I got into the shop. And there are some parts that I want to make for that mini lathe. Well, why not just scan the entire mini lathe into my CAD software so that I can then model parts based off of the actual mini lathe model that I will have in my CAD software. Or how about we do a CNC retrofit for a benchtop mill? No problem, we'll just scan in the entire mill and model whatever parts we may need based off the model of the milling machine that we <laughs> scanned into the CAD software. Like I said, the possibilities for a device like this are truly exciting, at least to me. So if that's the sort of thing that excites you or you think is cool in any way, definitely keep your eyes open because I hope to explore this thing a lot more in the future. Anyway, like I said, this thing is definitely a pro level machine. So I think the people that are mostly gonna be interested in this are probably gonna be professionals. You know, people in the automotive industry, maybe people in the art industry, people in like archeology, span people scanning in like rocks, ruins, geologists, I don't know. Like I said, the possibilities of this thing are truly incredible. However, it's definitely a professional level device. So if you are a professional who is interested in a device like this, I will leave some links in the description. I'll probably pin one in the comments. Definitely check it out because like I said, I, I don't think you're gonna find a more capable 3D scanner than the one that I have in my hand right here. But anyway, if you have made it this far into the video, as always, thank you so very much for watching. I do truly appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one very, very soon.